two, one. What? No. Three, two, one. What's up, guys? It's the Board Game Roamer, and we're back with our four gear lock playthrough of Too Many Bones. We're going to be starting our day three. Um, I think at this point, hopefully, uh, if you've never seen Too Many Bones, you kind of have an idea uh, of the flow of the game. So I'm going to try to um, do a little bit more playing, a little less commentary, if that's possible. If you know me, you know that may not be possible, but that's what we're going to try to do. Um, got some good feedback from the last video on uh, clarifications on a couple things with Tink. So I hope um, that I'll be able to use those. Uh, thank you, George, for that. And uh, I think that's it. So without further ado, let's get started on day number three. Day number three is the last day of our special encounters, uh, the standard special encounters. So let's take a look at what day three has in store. <clears throat> day three, crossing the Seabron, the Seabron River, a glistening well, uh, a glistening vein of trade running the length of Daylor playfully beckons as it shimmers in the daylight up ahead. But with so few bridges in these parts, the crossing is on an obvious spot for many scouts and traps. A journey of the importance, a journey of this importance leaves only two options, tucking the ears and trying to blend in is risky but efficient. A boat at dusk comes less chance of discovery but requires business with the Molnor, a trading syndicate with our own with their own set of drawbacks. All right, so what does that mean? Well, it means that I can't pick up the card apparently. All right. So basically we have two options. We're going to get a progress either way. We can either choose to, uh, the first option is we can roll a die. If we fail the dice roll, then one of the three um, duster-specific encounters will go to the top of the encounter deck, and we'll do that on day four. Or we can take the Molnar, get, uh, everybody gets a trove loot, and uh, we shuffle in their special encounter um, and potentially have to deal with them um, again and in fact deal with them uh, over and over again potentially uh, so I'm gonna do what I usually do um, I think I'm gonna just go with the risking it uh, with tucking our ears in because that would give us an extra progress and we need as much progress as we can get because uh, Duster is not an easy gear lock to face in general much less um, if we keep going several days and we have huge, huge batting points, which is already going to be one of the, I'm not going to call it an issue because it's not really an issue, but certainly one of the struggles that we're going to have, um, because we just, because we have so many gear locks. So let's go, I think I'm going to go with the first option where we all get a training point and a total of two progress points. So let's roll the d6 and see what happens uh, basically we roll a d6 and we do not want to roll a one or a two and this has to be done for all the gear locks so we'll start with picket and he rolls wow that's no reflex powder to fix that okay well i would roll for the rest uh we'll just do it and there's a four and there's a two. Okay, yeah, so all we need, excuse me, all we needed was that one of them to do that. So we take the first encounter, put it off to the side. Here's the encounter, we're putting it off to the side. Then we shuffle up. Uh, everything else is left. Give it another shuffle. Oh goodness. Apparently I'm gonna throw everything all over the place. So we're gonna give it a shuffle. And I kinda hold it to the side where I can't really see the fronts so or we'll read the backs. Three, two, one. Do that. 
Okay. And the counter we set aside goes on to the top. So we have technically completed the encounter. So first thing we're going to do is give ourselves progress points because that always seems to be what we forget. Or at least what I forget. So let's go here. We do get two progress points. So that actually makes our progress two. And we have completed day three. And then everybody gets a training point. <clears throat> um, I'm going to try to uh, let's start with Pickett uh, I think for Pickett let's get I think for Pickett, I'm going to go ahead and let's do, I really like uh, Repost. That is one of my favorite skills. Basically, Repost, it allows you to um, essentially disregard, I guess for lack of a better word. Um, well, I could just read you the skill, couldn't I? I guess that would make the most sense. Uh, repost. This is from his sheet. Active. When attacked by an adjacent baddie, you may avoid all damage and effects. If you have a second repost, you may also deal three damage to that baddie. So this is just going to help us to um, just basically ignore somebody that we're, that we're attacking. So if we get beside somebody that's doing a lot of damage and we can manage to roll that, then it may just help us to um, um, kind of tank that mob uh, that baddie for one extra round. Um, so we'll do that for him. For Boomer. Boomer, Boomer, Boomer. What are we going to do? Uh, I think for Boomer, I'm going to try to increase attack. Alright, so let's roll. And hope we don't roll a bone. Oh, we did not roll a bone. So we can increase Boomer's attack by one. And I'll show you in just one second why I'm doing that. Tank. Hmm. I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna try to uh increase defense. Oh, there we go. Reset that way when I roll she goes to two. All right, cool. So defense, excellent. There's one more defense. And Gilly, um, think I'm gonna go with uh, let's just go with Dex for now all right so that's everybody now why did I pick stats for all but but uh, pick it so if we look at Duster's car and again this is this is legal, but one of Duster's car, a card, uh, if, yeah, this, and this is, this is a skill that's not triggered by the backup, by bones. This just happens, okay? It's one of the two skills shrouded. Uh, Duster can only be targeted by adjacent units and limit, let me put the chip up here, limit. Shrouded, shrouded and limit. Yeah, I messed my finger up today. Shrouded and limit are two skills that are always active. Shrouded can only be targeted by adjacent units. Now targeted, that still means we could hit her with bombs. But targeted. 
Uh, limit. Duster's target immediately removes a stat die from their gear lock map for the remainder of this battle. Yeah. So, that's why basically at some point every gear lock needs a stat die because if it's targeted, it's going to take it away. And while it may not be something they use, at least it will be one stat die that they could get taken away that's not going to affect them too much so that's the end of day three now we do our rest and recovery um picket is gonna hold on to the zelfie route which is what he's got uh so he's gonna scout i believe it's about the best thing he can do he scouts a one point so far on the one point stack we have a troll youngin and underneath that will be another dragon welt. So that's not bad at all. Weekend kind of sucks, but it's not, not a huge weekend. So we'll go keep that. Boomer. Um, Boomer has infused incense. Uh, Roll two additional attack dice on your turn. It doesn't count towards decks. So I think um, I think she'll hold on to that. And she's going to choose not to scout, but to heal up because I forgot to do that last time around. So there she goes. Tink doesn't have any um, loot. So that's going to be a scout for Tink. That's a three again, another one point. So thus far we have a troll youngin, then we have a dragon whelp, and then we have direwolf pup flashback one. That's not bad at all. We'll leave that and Gilly. As much as I like this gadget arm, I really want, I think I could use something different. Uh, so I'm going to search for better loot and we're going to discard this. We're going to roll six attack die. Two, three, four, five, six. And hope we get some bones, at least one bone. Okay, well. There's no bones, so well, that didn't work. So there's a rest and recovery phase, and now it's on to day number four. Okay, so day number four is, I guess we could call it a duster special. So let's put ourselves on day number four. And the card reads as follows in a fog the fog is suffocating with no ability to see more than a few feet away it's easy to imagine seeing duster's dagger oh sorry it's easy to imagine seeing duster's face anywhere that scar that dagger the council can't be trusted you know these words are nothing but a whisper but they are loud and clear fog suffocating zero vision She's right here, but she's nowhere. Maybe that fog is playing tricks with it, with our sights. And sounds? They're cowards, or they'd come for me themselves like the first time. A mere seconds pass, and the fog lifts. Wandering into a wolf den is usually ill-advised. All right, cool. So, this has been story time with Board Game Roller. All right, so we only have one option here. And it is, um, anyone have some leftover bog meat? Huh? Um, batty Q, batty points. Create the battle queue using batty type baddies from active or defeated stacks, as many as possible. Then use other types. So we'll start with the active stacks, I guess. Uh, so our batty Q, this is day four. That means it's 16 points. So let's start with the five points, and we're only looking for beast type um, 
All right, so there's one beast and no nope. we need three if possible two we'll have to shuffle these when we're done two and there's number three so that's 15 so then we'll take these so here's our those three will be our active stack which is going to go flash back uh, like that and i'll show you those here in a second and i'm going to shuffle the rest of these up real good let's do it over here where you can see it i don't really know a good way to shuffle these So let's do that, and then somewhere over there, maybe like that, and that, and that, and that. All right. So that's shuffle. Oops. All right, and let's look at our one point stack. Well, we already have one one point, uh, the direwolf pup that we scouted earlier. So. We'll put him there, and I guess we'll just alternate the last two. It's a pretty big one-point stack over here, so so here we go. We've got um, our four enemies, and I'll show you as they get put out. There's the active stack. It says, during battle setup, place gear locks in gear lock melee positions only, then bring out baddies to gear lock. Bring, then bring out baddies to gear lock range positions only. And baddies have surprise. Wow, this. Holy jeez. Okay. Well, this is going to be um, painful, I think, is probably the best word. So, let's set these guys up. So, the first... Uh, enemy that we have is a dire wolf and that is a six hit point four initiative four attack dice with lash back two so let's get six and that is lane one Boink. and the initiative on that is a four all right and then lane two you want to particularly hate a Griffin Howler, five hit points, oops, five initiative, three attack, but it has dive, flight, and signal one. Uh, brutal. And that's lane two. And remember, it said put it in the gear lock melee positions. So that's what we got to do. Uh, next we have the Owl Bear. Six hit points, four initiative, four attack dice, inspire one, and terrify, which is going to make him a lot harder for adjacent enemies to attack. Um, so he's got six. So he needs two more. He's in position number three. Three. His initiative is four. And they have surprise, which means they all get to go first. <sighs> and then we have our direwolf pup that we scouted earlier. Three hit points. Goes. We'll go right there. And I forgot to place traps. Um. We'll place a trap on him. I would have put that out before I put these out, actually. I just forgot to do that. So we'll do that. Take this out. If we get this, we're going to get two, two training points in a loop, which is pretty awesome. It's just going to be a really brutal battle. Uh, 
Pickett gets to roll his two defense dice. <laughs> okay. And he rolls nothing. Before battle, we get to roll our build die for Tink. So there we go. Put it up and down. So the only thing, the only thing it could point to that we have attachment wise is this anyway, which will come in handy if he lives long enough. And then we will roll our initiative dice. Oh wow. You know, and without surprise, this would have been, gosh, this would have been so good. So the order is going to be Gilly or Boomer first. We'll have to decide which one we want to do. Then pick it, then Tink. <sighs> okay, well... Hmm. I'm kind of thinking Tink here. I mean, pick it there. Gilly there. Maybe Boomer here and Tink here. And here's why I'm thinking this. So it's going to go this guy first. The Griffin Howler is going to attack Gilly and do signal one. That's lovely. Um, just going to add somebody in at one point in. That's great. And then we're going to have this direwolf go. Yeah. All right. Uh, am I happy with that? Yeah, I think, I think I'm happy with that. All right, cool. Sort of. So let's get started. Oh, I forgot to put this. Uh, what is that? A three? So, of course, this will act last in that order. All right. So, first off, purple. That's going to be the Griffin Howler. It has dive and flat. Uh, dive doesn't matter because it doesn't have a flat effect yet. Uh, it will gain flat, um, and it has signal one, so signal one will add in that one point that we scouted earlier to the battle queue. It gets three attack dice, and it gains at the end of its turn the flight effect, if I can find it, which means it is not targetable, which is really too bad so let's roll that up uh, there's three damage <laughs> one two three to gilly then we've got oh let's roll the uh dire wolf uh, attack dice here okay minus two that's good <clears throat> then we've got the dire wolf uh, attacking Boomer with two attack dice. That's two damage. Good thing we healed up. And then we've got the yellow Inspire One Terrify. Okay, so Inspire. The next baddie on the initiative meter, uh, meter takes their turn immediately after this unit and is granted a number of additional attack dice. So that means that this direwolf pup is going to have two attack dice instead of 
one and terrify after this unit is attacked place a terrify effect die on the attacking unit until the end of its next turn so terrify it's attacking pig it's not attacking it so that doesn't matter yet that will possibly matter this next turn so let's roll that up oh my gosh four damage to pick it Oh, me. Okay. Now we got decisions to make. All right. So that's that. And then here's the lashback. Or excuse me. Here's the direwolf pup with two attack dice from the inspire effect of the previous baddie. It is already, you know, goes next. So we don't have to move it on the initiative meter. It's going to be two against Tink, and it's going to roll a two and a bone. Tink is going to lose two. Okay. Then we've got Boomer. Now, Boomer has four decks. I think Boomer's going to roll two attack dice and two defense dice and target this guy here, the direwolf pup. The reason, the reason that I want to do that is I want Tink to be able to get out his bot um, with this attachment to start doing some damage. To non-adjacent enemies. So yeah. Let's do that. Alright, so here we go. Really? Really? Oh goodness. That's one damage. No lash back. <clears throat> and three bones, which is throw odds, or bluff bomb. So, I could move that direwolf away. I mean, I would probably kill it, but I could move it away. Yeah, let's do that. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to use all three of these. Uh, hopefully this is a good move. All three of those. It says, let's see, let me double check and make sure. Select any occupied position. That unit is immediately repositioned to an adjacent position of Booner's Choice. So I'm going to pick this occupied position. And right there. Okay. Next is Gilly. Gilly has four decks. And um, so Gilly is going to roll his two attack, one defense. And might as well roll... No, this does absolutely no good. Return fire because all of those units are melee based. Um, yeah. I guess that's what he's going to do. Here we go. Oh. Um, who did I say I was going to target? I didn't say who I was going to target, did I? Oh, man. Um, well, I can't target him. 
I mean, he would have targeted whoever had the most attack. So, we'll say he targeted this. That would make the most sense. So, th three comes off of there. Because remember, we do have one more sitting back here waiting. So, that's three damage. And one defense. That was his turn. Okay. Now we do Tink. So what are we going to do with Tink? Well, we're going to get a bot. Put it on its starting value. Um, we're going to put the one attachment we have available there. That's still not cost any decks. Um, we're going to spend one dex. So we go from, let's see, let's, let me put this up here. So we go from five dex to four dex to increase the battery power to two. Um, Then, hmm. yep, then we're going to deploy it. That's going to take us down to three. It's got four hit points. One, two, three, four. And it has the attachment. Um, then I'm going to roll, and this gets exhausted. Then I'm going to roll two attack, nope, sorry, not two attack dice, two defense dice. Oh, wait, can I see here? Let me double check something. Now, I don't see anything that says that I can't use it. Yeah, I don't see anything that says I can't use it the turn that it comes out. So, I'm going to go ahead and use it. Oh, that's three to two. Uh, he's going to attack this dire wolf pup, do one. Uh, it, is, it is immune to a lot of things, but one of the things that it's not immune to is lashback. So we'll do that. And then, that's two decks. Then, Um, then we're going to roll one defense and we're going to roll this, uh, this die here. And that is going to let us do damage to a non-adjacent, um, oh goodness, firing arm. Deal number damage to any non-adjacent baddie and it's an instant. So that's what we're going to do. And that will be all the decks for Tink. And the baddie we're going to target is the owlbear. All right. So Tink gets one defense, which is not really what I wanted. And the owlbear takes two damage, which is not enough to kill it, unfortunately. Yeah, this is going to be a rough round. I already see it. All right, let's get started. So five. That's the purple. It says dive. Remember, dive says if the flood effect dies active on this unit at the start of its turn, it is immediately place this unit adjacent to the weakest available unit and target it. Well, the only available uh, units are Gilly and the spider bot. 
So actually, this might work out if Boomer lives because we could have it target the spider bot. Hmm. That may work. So let's have it target targets as much as I hate to use the spider bot 3.0. Uh, we may have to do it just to beat this thing. Yeah. Alright, so he's gonna target the spider bot 3.0. He's going to roll I'll put this back on here. He's gonna roll three attack die. Yeah. And the spider bot is destroyed. Oh wait, I'm sorry, he had three. Shoot. Uh, Alright, he's attacking Gilly. He does three. Gilly only had two left. Gilly is knocked out. That was purple. Blue. Two attack die. That's here, the dire wolf versus Boomer. Two attack dice against Boomer. Uh, three damage, that's more than enough to knock out Boomer. Man. <sighs> Duster is tough. Uh, so that takes care of that. Yellow, that is the owlbear. Four attack dice. Two, three, four. Three, four, five damage to Picket, who fins off one. I probably should have rolled this die. That was a tactical error on my part. And takes the other two, which knocks him out. And, oops. and then the direwolf pup goes, one attack die, versus the spider bot, does one damage, spider bot's still in there, and I really don't want to use this. So Hmm. All right. <clears throat> I guess no, it doesn't really matter. I don't suppose. So Tink's going to move over one. That's one dex. He's got four left. He's going to spend two attack, one defense against Griffin Howler. He's going to roll two defense. Do one damage to the Griffin Howler. At this point, I think this is purely academic. Round three. Purple first. Purple goes... The signal one dragon whelp that we scouted goes to the top or it goes to the uh, active stack. Then it does three attack dice versus tink. Uh, wow, only does one damage. That's impressive. And gains the flight effect. Yellow. One, well, let's see, yeah, closest two, and this is probably the death blow. Two, three, four, yeah, takes one. Only had two left. Tinks off the map, and we were defeated. So, 
That is quite unfortunate. So let's take all these dice away. Go ahead and put these exhausted. And all right, and bring it. Da, da, da. Okay. Now I'm leaving these out like this because I need to check. Give me one second and let me check how this works if there's still baddies left in the active stack and on the field if uh, we lose an encounter. Encounters. Okay, so any undefeated baddies go face down. So all these will go face down. Is that a five? Five, this is the only other one. These will go face down on the bottom. Give me one second here. I got to do this a specific way because I don't have enough room in the trays. The trays are almost big enough, but not quite big enough from chip theory in this case to hold all the baddies uh, they these all these go face down at the bottom of their active stacks or excuse me of the baddie um, active stack yeah okay and then all this help goes over here we don't get any rewards um, so the encounter is over. Next, we will do rest and recovery. And pretty much the only thing that we can do with rest and recovery is everybody heal up. That's going to be our only options. That really stinks. Uh, probably should have. Chosen the safer option, but I didn't. And they were knocked out, so this goes away. And there, there, everything's back in place. Okay. All right. Well, that was day three, unfortunately. And um, yeah, so there you go. Uh, hopefully, day four will be much better uh so if you saw anything tactically i could have done better uh let me know i think definitely um having a the two defense rolls not come up did not help there i should have rolled this proposed uh um for sure and then them starting over here with our ranged units, that was just brutal because we could have kind of turtled maybe in the corner and mitigated some of that. Um, but we'll see what happens next time. Thank you guys for watching. And this was day three. We'll start day four in the next episode. And I will see you in the next episode. Bye, guys.